So you are certified in Cisco, but boss asks you to work on Aruba switches. Hmm, time to learn some new technology. But reading the study material or watching several different YouTube videos, it's going to take some time. No, my friend, this video is all you need. Here I will show you side by side comparison that with knowledge that you have already acquired from Cisco, you should be able to configure Aruba switch from scratch with a smile on your face. Some of my previously posted video will already show you how to stack Aruba switches as well as form or upgrade a whole stack or individual Aruba switches. But in this video, we will compare host name, spanning tree, interfaces and port channels, VLANs, routings, banner, voice VLANs, logging and SNMP. Here I have both Cisco and Aruba console connections. Cisco on the left and Aruba is on the right side. And you can see that console configurations are identical. You can also use the Cisco console cable. That's exactly what I'm using. And th there's no difference in the configuration. So it starts in operator mode. And just like Cisco, you hit enable to get into the privilege exec or in case of Aruba, that's a manager mode. So let's start with configuration. For Cisco, you have to do config T. It won't let you otherwise, but Aruba config is enough. You can just go right into it. Let's get our host name right. For Cisco, same command. No difference for Aruba. Spanning tree commands are identical. Let me set the spanning tree mode on both of them. As you see, they're identical. Let's create some VLAN. See, creating VLAN is pretty same, uh, but when you talk about naming, um, there is a difference. Let me show you that. Uh, Cisco takes that pretty easy, but Aruba does not like the gap within your name. So in order to avoid that, you just put them in the quotation and that works some spanning tree vlan related command as you can see on cisco side they are same setting the root primary and of course it is same for the aruba side so i'm going to go and set both primary and secondary now comes the dissimilarities for vlan with Cisco, you cannot configure interfaces within the VLAN specific configuration. But for Aruba, once you in the VLAN configuration mode, you should be able to go ahead and associate that VLAN to specific interface or even trunk, which is also different for Aruba. So as you can see on the Cisco side, I am in the VLAN configuration mode and I try to go assign that particular VLAN 2 to specific interface. It's not possible, but here you can see that I'm in the VLAN configuration mode and I was able to configure port 1 and port 2 as, as untagged, Cisco's term access, and port 24 tagged, which is Cisco's term trunk. Well, there is a bit to it. I will get back to the trunking. So there's a very, very easy that Cisco Aruba makes it very easy in terms of configuring a particular VLAN on an interface through VLAN mode as well as possible in the interface mode. So let me let me show you this interface um, three, right? I can do untag VLAN two and there you go. So VLAN show VLAN two will show you uh, what ports are in it. 1, 2 we said earlier through the VLAN mode, 3 we did it through the interface mode and 24 through the VLAN mode so very easy. Coming to the discussion to trunk, on Cisco you have to pick a specific port that you want to configure trunk. You need to set the dynamic trunking protocol and you have to also specify the encapsulation .1Q or ISL. Um, Aruba's it's pretty simple you just pick a port and you just add the VLAN as a tagged VLAN and there you go that's all you need to do by default Aruba's all 802.1q ISL is a Cisco proprietary so there's no confusion there 
Also, as you can see that the interfaces are also different. Uh, on Cisco, there's also gigabit or fast Ethernet or Ethernet based on the model of the Cisco. Uh, there's also this denomination, but for Aruba, there is no such thing. You just interface ID for stacking. It's a uh, one slash one or two slash one, but for well, uh, my screen is kind of uh, enlarged. So let me go ahead and uh, lower the um, resolution uh, for Aruba it's uh, either one two three four that's just it interface ID for stacking will be one slash one or two slash one based on this switch ID but no confusion there so coming to the port channel configuration on Cisco side you have to create the port channel with the port channel ID and then you will have to specify the port channel specific configuration then you have to pick the associated member ports interfaces and you're going to have to configure a specific port configuration as well as put make them a member of that specific port channel uh, you can do it the other way you can just create the pick the ports or the interfaces make them the member of the port channel and it creates the port channel on the Aruba side it is pretty simple it's one line also on the Cisco side you have to specify the modes right it's another line of configuration for Aruba no nope. all of that one line so easy what do you think so this is where most people get confused port channel this is PO port channel and then the port channel ID so you can do do And 1 through 48, right, you can create, these are the maximum number of IDs you can create on uh, 3750X, uh, 3750X switches. And for Aruba, the, the term port channel is replaced by TRK1. Do not con confuse trunk and TRK. Imagine port channel for Cisco is the term TRK for Aruba. Um, just like Cisco, there's limitations of how many TRK you can create on Aruba for 3810M, the ones I have. Um, looks like um, 114, yep. Looks like you can create 114 TRKs. So guys, TRKs are same as port channel. Do not miss TRK with the trunk. Trunk concept is same for both Cisco and Aruba but TRK equals to port channel so let's get to the routing part of this configuration on Cisco um, for layer 2 you configure default gateway and here you go and uh, if you want to make it a layer 3 device all you do just um, enable IP routing and you just put a default route statement you can have additional route statement but for Aruba it's the same exact same there is no difference in that by the way I'm just wanna point out a different that's why I'm bringing bringing this discussion on Aruba you said the default route default gateway same way you can also enable IP routing but if you want to mistakenly configure this switch as layer 3a and want to go back to layer 2 simply pasting the default gateway will not work where you can paste that for Cisco it won't matter both IP default gateway and IP routing if they're both enable switch will also take the layer 3 mode so let me show you same commands all three of them but here the kicker so I'm going to configure the I'm going to put it back to layer 2 mode right I'm just going to paste it and it's going to simply say you can have it you can have routing enable as well as you know layer 2 but for Cisco it's not a matter you can do it it's not going to take it it's going to continue to stay routing but it's going to let you do it let's get talk about voice VLAN for Cisco and for this lab let's talk about VLAN 5 is voice VLAN so in order to configure that you need to go to interface switch port voice VLAN 
five, right? So pretty much simple, you just mention that. But for Aruba, it's a little different. Voice VLANs needs to be tagged, as it is Axis and um, ta uh, Trunk for Cisco. For Aruba, those are tagged and untagged. Anything but Axis ports that are untagged would be tagged. So Voice VLAN would be uh, part of that. Also, you have to specify within that VLAN configuration mode that this is a voice VLAN. So I'm going to So as you can see that um, I'm going to put the 2 into VLAN 5 and I also specify that this is a voice VLAN. Alright, so I have port 2, port 5 and port 24. Um, port 2 and 5 are just a regular host port with a phone in it and 24 is my tag um, uplink port. And also it may specify here this is a voice VLAN. Let's talk about SVI, Layer 3 interface for your VLAN. The configuration syntax or the commands are exactly the same for Aruba and Cisco. So interface, VLAN. But doing the interface VLAN, if you do not have the VLAN, doesn't do anything. So you have to create the VLAN. Creating the interface on the Cisco side will not create the VLAN if you do not already have it. People make that mistakes a lot. But on Aruba, if you create an interface for a VLAN which is not there, it will also create the VLAN in the VLAN database. How cool is that? Oh, also, slash 24 notation for IP addresses for mask is not possible in Cisco. But wait till you see Aruba. The magic happens in the background and it is so cool. Just like in a newer model of Cisco Nexus series, um, will have this feature where you can just um, use the CIDR value for the mask instead of typing 255, 255, 255, whatnot. But here on the SVI, you can see that it, Aruba makes it easier and it will create the VLAN to avoid some mistakes. Here you can see that I did not have VLAN 11 beforehand, but doing the interface command did create the VLAN 11. But on the Cisco side, we do not have VLAN 11. You know, we started from 2 to 10 VLAN, right? No VLAN 11. So that interface will not work. Uh, I think I need to change my font size here. Oh, that looks good. Banners. You know, the text that shows up when you try to SSH to a switch. That same command for both Cisco and Aruba. You know, part of the similarities. Banner MOTD, message of the day. And you create, uh, you, you use a identifier, start and end identifier. Here I use the pound sign and you paste, I have it on the clipboard and you end that with that pound sign, which is the denominator and that it's there. You can just show it. And there is on the Aruba side, it's the same exact, exact, exact commands to create it and also to show the banner and next time you log in it will show you during the SSH. Just wanted to show you the interface related configuration uh, for a particular interface with uh, both phone and voice. So here I have voice VLAN 5 and I'm gonna just set the access VLAN um, 2 and uh, we'll do the same thing for Aruba side and no difference actually it's pretty same but just wanted to show you this specific. Also, no do needed. Straight, you can just paste your command and it will work. Unlike Cisco, you have to do do show. Coming down to the last few topics, here we have logging. Um, this is where your switch sends out uh, different logs to a syslog server. Here we have logging host and the IP address of your syslog server. You can also specify optionally the source interface for the syslog messages to be sent out to. 
here I'm using VLAN 11 you know VLAN 11 that it was not created but we do have an interface for that you have to pick the VLAN where you have an SVI so I'm gonna go and fix that create the VLAN and on the Aruba side the concept is pretty same you just have to know the syntax just do context sensitive logging and a question mark and you'll see that the host word is not needed you're just logging in the IP address and um, specifying the source interface is an altogether different command it is IP source interface and you can use multiple uh, several stuff you the IP source interface command here you have for the syslog you can see you can use for radius and SNMP I'm going to use for syslag and I'm using the VLAN 11 interface. Of course, the VLAN you're picking has to have an SVI layer 3 interface. Right now, it's telling me it's down. L last but not the least, port security. Guys, just like I showed you how easy it is to configure multi line port channel configuration in Cisco, but for Aruba, it's just one line. Similarly, with port security, here you can see you can go in the interface and you can specify a different port security configuration you know the maximum mac address allowed and then what happens if it crosses that threshold um, and by the way if you do not know you can have all kinds of port security configuration within an interface but it does not take effect until you have the command switch port port security that's right switch port port security enables the port security feature inside the Cisco interface whereas on Aruba side it's the same concept it does act like the same way but it's not an interface level configuration it's a global configuration where you can just create the port security for a range of and all of it all that port security does could be fit into one command line let me show you here you can see that on Aruba port security command applies on the global configuration mode and you can just put the range here you have options you can have multiple all that port security does could be in the one line so here I have um, different option I'm just going to start with the learning mode by default it's continuous where um, it is continuously learning and the MAC address is being erased uh, five seconds timeout I believe and I'm using the limited continuous where it is going to stop when we reach maximum um, MAC address level it is going to stop learning MAC addresses on this one pretty much going to reject everything afterwards and then um, you can use like um, what actions you're going to take you know uh, are you going to and in the action you have options like you can just do nothing you can just send an alarm and the last option similar to shut down on the Cisco side would be to you know, send an alarm and shut down by the way on the Cisco side it will always create an alert on the syslog port security uh, validation command would be show port security same for both so on the Aruba side the show port security shows the one through five the one we configured limited continuous send alarm and the eavesdrop prevention is disabled to disable port security within the interface just do no port switch port port security for Cisco same as um, the global configuration on Aruba side you go ahead and create no port security and the range of ports or port and it will disable port security and put it back to default to continuous mode I want to focus on the eavesdrop prevention for a second guys please have it disabled for any untagged ports otherwise it's going to create a lot of issues Make sure you have eavesdrop prevention disabled on untagged ports. All right, friends, I believe I have covered all the promise aspect of configuration differences between uh, you know, Aruba and Cisco and how easy it is to configure an Aruba with the knowledge you already have with Cisco. Uh, there are several dissimilarities, but majority of the commands are pretty much same. Or at least with the knowledge of Cisco, you can you know navigate through this. 
um, please let me know um, you know if you like this video make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so if I come up with another one you are the one to know first I would also appreciate if you leave me a comment one or two you know it, it kind of helps me to find out how my channel is doing do I need to improve upon something of course I know there are plenty of stuff of course the noise in my uh, room where I record is always high so you always have background noise so I know but I would like to hear from you guys what do you think and um, if any other topics you want me to focus on uh, I will be traveling pretty soon and uh, we'll have a project where I'll be installing cat 9300s and of course I'm gonna make videos about it so yep hit that subscribe button so and press the bell icon so you know when it's coming until then have a good one keep learning stay focused from your friend tutorials and tips have a good one can sign out without showing you the right the right mem and write both works for Cisco but for Aruba unfortunately write mem is the only command Thank you.